What up, tubers? Yeah, it's your old pal, Jackhammer Mike, with part two of another lame video, or part three or four. I don't even know where we're at right now. Uh, just look at the playlist. This is going into the caching playlist, kind of an update on it. Uh, giving a lot of thought to uh, switching from buckets to bins or containers. This is a 27 gallon one, tough tote, and this is probably, we're going to go with this, uh, we can get more stuff in it, and not that it has a smaller footprint than the buckets, but it's just going to be easier to deal with. So, um, Home Depot has these on sale, by the way. 27 gallon ones were uh, six something. They were under seven dollars. Um, when I went to Winco and bought the bucket and the lid, um, that was about six ish. So good value right here, um, and they're strong. They had some other ones there, ones that were a lot more flimsy. We don't want that. Um, they had uh, the Husky brand. There, which is like their Home Depot brand uh, that had little clippable handles that would clip over to the top but they were drilled into the side of this thing so this technically had holes in the sides um, the only holes on this are up here on top and that's going to be solved with a contractor bag basically putting this on the top of it to seal or help seal it like that do that and then the lid hopefully it's gonna snap into place yeah we're good then I can push it down a little bit make sure it's it's a little bit of a, a gap right there However, I went over to the moving supply and got stretch wrap roll of it to go around the edge here maybe a couple of times, get this bag kind of squared away a little bit better, get this narrowed down a little bit. Um, it's just an extra layer of protection, <laughs> so to speak. You can never have enough protection. Um, well, is it necessary? Yeah, I think it is. I feel better with it on, you know, having that barrier is, uh, I think, smart. So, um, Couple other things. I got chain today. Six foot pieces, chain, and some uh, threaded. What do they call these things? Quick link links, so I can chain them to the bottom. Of, chain them to this. In fact, let's just make one right now. Um, be able to chain it to that and you definitely want to leave this on you want to chain it through here because this is the swivel um, allows for some flexibility uh, so the animal doesn't get all tangled up in the shit and uh, mess it up so we're just going to put that on there like that run one end of chain through here now we're going to do the chain first like really tight that's the way we like it really tight and put that on there and uh, lock this up so these locks or links whatever you want to call them are uh, 800 pound tinsel strength the chain is 800 pound tinsel strength um, I'm not sure what this is but I'm going to assume that it's 20 uh, strong enough to uh, hold a javelina. 
And then what I want to do is uh, I want to put uh, another one of these little jewels on the other end. Um, I have a problem that I haven't considered yet, and that is anchoring these things. Now there are trees out there, and I could ain't totally anchor this around a tree, which is why I'm putting this on here. Um, and like if uh, you go back and look at my uh, video, Wilbur takes a header, <laughs> which was funny as shit. But again, I, I'm still gonna think. You know, the more I see it, I'm gonna say that those things were getting chased by something. And uh, because they've got three going across the wash, kind of willy-nilly and running, it looked like. And Wilbur goes off to the left, so there was at least four pigs there. And uh, they weren't just sitting around grazing or anything, man. They were moving. And for whatever reason, Wilbur goes off to the left, and then again, he falls off the bank and everything. It's funny. And then he goes up into the bush on his own. So what they were doing, I don't know. But now I have a six foot chain on this trap. I can definitely link this around a tree. Help keep it secure. Um, because the thing of it is, I don't have earth anchors. Um, I don't have rebar or anything like that. And I wasn't sure on how to anchor it to rebar. I think the earth anchors are probably going to be the hot tip, but I don't have them and we're going to cash this weekend, so I don't think there's going to be a chance that I'm going to get them. So as it is right now, we're just going to assume that we're going to put this in, the, in, in a not forested area, but an area that's got a bunch of trees that might have a game trail going up into it, like in that wash. Um, and again, you'll go go back and look at Wilbur Takes a Header. It's a quick video, it's a funny video. And you can see, you know, where they went and where they came from, you know, a wide open area, but there's trees around it that I can lock this around a tree stump and uh, not worry about them getting away. So, that's the update with the chain. I gotta put these ends on real quick, get them onto that. Um, the storage container, it will not fit a five gallon bucket standing up. Here's another little dilemma. We have got to think about how we're gonna transport water. So basically I'll probably take one of the, the, the bucket and lay it on its side stuff shit into it so it's not wasted space but um, we have to figure out how we're gonna haul water the closest cattle tank to our spot is a mile and a half there's others that are out there that are five miles away that's a long fucking hike and you don't want to do it every day so you're gonna bring well they're five gallon buckets and if you were to fill it at eight pounds a gallon uh, yeah, you're not putting five gallons in there, maybe three, you know, so there's 24 gallons there, and if you had two to keep yourself balanced, yeah, 48 pounds on top of your gun and your ammo and your vest, whatever you're hiking with, a lot of weight, definitely a lot of weight. Now, I know what you're going to say, I know I hear you out there yelling into the TV screen, hey, dummy. Haven't you ever heard of collapsible buckets and water bags and shit like that? Uh, well, yeah, I have, but, you know, how dependable is it? How big are they? Um, I have fold the carrier, plastic water jug. In fact, I'll probably throw this in there just for shits and giggles. Um, yeah, it's five gallons, but you're not going to lug it, you know, full of water. If, again, another 40 pounds. I don't think so, um, but you know, again, collapsible buckets—they only make them so big. So, you know, it's like, how are you going to transport water over a mile or two miles or five miles? Um, you want to get the most bang for your buck, and you know, maybe go out once every couple of days to do that. 
You know what I'm saying? You know, going every day. There ain't no live streams right where we're at. We're not in the mountains next to a stream. We have just an endless supply of water. So that's an update on that. I did get something cool though. To put in our stash. Shot. Power Powder Plus. With a minimum of 70% available chlorine. This is a calcium hypochlorite, 73%. Um, I don't know what the other shit that's in here. It's 23 or 27% inner, you know, stuff. I don't know, whatever it is. It's just whatever keeps it powdery or whatever. Um, do not mix with other products or pre-dissolve before use. Because <laughs> chlorine gas sucks, dude. Um, but this one pound bag will treat 16... 1,500 gallons of water in a pool. Um, I'll have to write down the ratio and then laminate it and put it in the bot in the bag so that we know how to mix this. Um, I can't remember the formula, but it's all over the internet out there. Um, liquid chlorine doesn't last very long. The powder, you can make up chlorine all day long. This powder will last forever as long as it's dry. So it's going to get a vacuum seal and then it's going to get a couple of heavy Ziploc bags um, so that we can reseal it, it doesn't get stale and, and whatnot. So um, shock, 73%, you got to have it at 73%, don't get the 47% stuff because that's just not going to do it. And most of the good recipes that are out there for this are uh, with 70% or better and it's 73 so shock that's a big score right now I, I've been trying to get I keep forgetting to go to the pool supply and get a bag or two of this shit um, again it's like you use just like a teaspoon tablespoon and a gallon of water if that it's a very small amount um, in a gallon of water and then that becomes chlorine and uh, you're talking drops per gallon of this into your water containers. So the only debate, which I don't even know if it's gonna be a debate or not, the only question I have is, should I treat this before I bury it or after I bury it? Because I'm kind of planning, I'd like to use filtered water, and normally I don't drink tap water. However, the tap water is already gonna have chlorine in it. Man, it's got to have fluoride in it too, which I really don't like. But it's already going to have chlorine in it. If I filled this full of tap water and sealed it, buried it, it's probably going to be all right to where I only maybe have to use a minimum of this and not maybe a half a batch. I, I just don't know. Um, comment below, please. I've got till uh, we're going to go out Friday. And hopefully we'll be able to cash there. Like I said, the weather is really nice out there. And uh, there's a lot of people that go out there at this time of the year. So we may not be able to do anything. Hopefully we can do it Friday morning when no one's there. And uh, be able to do our shit without too many issues. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, so we're going to, I have till Friday. Um, or, you know. Thursday basically if you guys get comments in for the next couple of days do you think I ought to treat it before or after I uh, bury it you know when I if I were to go to dig it up then I could treat it because this will be in the containers they're well sealed by the way and uh, not uh, gonna contaminate my food stuff yeah the cool thing about this now this bin um, you know, we've got our coffee, coffee mugs, silverware, snare and all that shit. But um, Contingency Plan has a cast iron skillet here somewhere that he wants to throw in there. And that's okay. We could do that. Um, and we got all our spices and stuff. But yeah, he wants to throw in a skillet, which is cool. Um, also, 
picked up a buttload of uh, batteries to throw in there. Um, most of our stuff, at least mine, uh, for most of my handheld flashlights and my handheld um, couple of my headlamps um, are triple A's. Uh, the other headlamp that I got, the real powerful one, that one's an 1855 8, something or other rechargeable battery. Um, and I got like eight batteries, so th that's a fantastic light. It's really bright, uh, but it ain't gonna last me forever. And until I get a solar charger, um, no bueno. We're, we're gonna be relying on batteries, and these are only gonna last so long. Um, this is a 30 pack of them. They're like 15 bucks at, at Home Depot right now. Another 30 pack, so there's 60 batteries there. And then I got a 36 pack of double A's. Um, some of the things that we have operate off double A, um, especially my ham radio. I got a uh, battery pack for it that runs double A batteries. So if my, I have three uh, rechargeable coming. So not only will I have four rechargeable batteries for my light, I'll also have these, or not my light, but my radio. And I'll also have these if for some reason I can't get them to charge or whatever. Um, this will get us by for some more, you know, some more time. And TCP, and I, hopefully he doesn't get butt hurt. Um, he's got a big box full of freaking batteries here. The contingency plan stash, yeah. Ugh, good lord. Ugh. This whole basket is loaded with batteries and batteries and all. I don't know how old these are. Oh, cool. I don't know how old some of these things are. Um, he didn't write the date on them, so I don't know. The, the problem with it is that, one, they're kind of like off-brand names, like Thunderbolt, I don't know, Sunbeam. It's not that they're bad batteries, it's just that they're not fresh batteries. So, um, I just, I'm gonna put fresh batteries in here. In fact, I have to mark on, on them before I put them in there, what date I bought them at, so that we know how old they are. Last up to 10 years, shelf life. So, batteries, shock, chain, ceiling wrap, and we're almost there. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to get a shortwave radio. I really wanna have a shortwave, but um, it's just not gonna happen this week. So, we're gonna be short a shortwave. <laughs> no. But that's not a problem. Um, you know, we can always go, we're gonna always go out and bury more. Like I said, this is the first cache of at least five out there. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say. I was gonna say that the size of these things, I'm gonna double the quantity of food, at least double the quantity of food in there. Um, so instead of having a 10 day supply, um, there's gonna be 20 in there. Plus I can put more fruit, um, throw some vegetables in there, and uh, maybe some peanut butter and all. Probably some peanut butter, just for that extra protein. And uh, we'll be able to get more stuff in there. Of course, they're gonna weigh more, but you know they're in the ground. It's not like we have to lug them anywhere. You know, It's at the camp, so they're close by. So anyway, um, that's my little update. Um, again, feel free to comment down there. Should I treat the water before I bury it or when we dig it up? I'd like to uh, know what you guys think. So with that, I am out.